Hi, first grade. Welcome back. I have another I Can Read book to share with you this week. Remember, I Can Read books, we can tell by looking at the spine label at the bottom of the spine. And instead of PIC for picture book, it has an I-C-R, I Can Read. And then, do you remember under the I Can Read what those three letters mean? If you said author's last name, you're right. And at the Westmere Library, we put a red dot on the spine. If you go to another Gilderland school, it might look a little different, but I think we all have a section of I Can Read. This book also has a label on the spine that has a turkey on it, so we can easily find books about Thanksgiving. Fluffy's Thanksgiving. This book's birthday was 1997, and it says, after starting as an ear of corn in his school's Thanksgiving play, the classroom guinea pig enjoys his holiday at Maxwell's home where he scares Grammy and battles a monster. Is it fiction or nonfiction? The author is Kate McMullen. The illustrator is Mavis Smith. Let's get started. Fluffy takes a bow. You are all going to be in a Thanksgiving play, Ms. Day told her class. Even Fluffy, asked Maxwell. I think we can find a small part for Fluffy, said Ms. Day. A small part, thought Fluffy. I want a big part. Who would like to be the chief? asked Miss Day. I'm your chief, thought Fluffy. How about Maxwell? Yeah, said Maxwell. Who wants to be Squanto? asked Miss Day. Me, 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 thought Fluffy. Wade will be Squanto, said Miss Day. Remember that I can read, have more words, still have illustrations, but more words. And they still repeat how many times have I said Ms. Day? How many times have I said Fluffy? So the more times we say it, the better we get at recognizing it. Raise your hand if you'd like to play a pilgrim, asked Ms. Day. Hello, I'm raising my paw, thought Fluffy. But Ms. Day didn't see Fluffy's paw. She picked Emma and six other kids to play pilgrims. And who wants to play the turkey? It's not my first choice, said Fluffy. But hey, gobble, gobble. I'll do it, said Jasmine. Miss Day, said Maxwell, what part do we have for Fluffy? Yeah, what part do we have for Fluffy, thought Fluffy. Fluffy would make a cute pumpkin, said Jasmine. I don't think so, thought Fluffy. Fluffy's too fat to be a zucchini, said Wade. Who asked you, thought Fluffy. Miss Day, called Emma, I know the perfect part for Fluffy. She whispered her idea to Miss Day. Fluffy did not want to hear what she said. The whole school came to see the Thanksgiving play. The curtain went up. Thank you, Squanto, said Emma the Pilgrim, for your gift of corn. Emma the Pilgrim held up an ear of corn. The ear of corn was Fluffy. Then Emma put an ear of corn into her pocket, and the play went on. We could have guessed by looking at the cover what part Fluffy would play. The ear of corn stuck its head out of the pocket. It sniffed the feast table. The audience started to giggle. Emma the pilgrim walked very close to the feast table. The ear of corn forgot all about being an ear of corn and climbed out of the pocket and onto the table. It ran over to a pile of onions and yams and pumpkins and other ears of corn. You know what a yam is? And yam is very similar, or sometimes we call sweet potatoes. Yams. The audience laughed, but the ear of corn didn't notice. It was too busy gobbling its own Thanksgiving feast. When the play was over, Miss Day's class took a bow. The audience clapped and clapped. Emma the Pilgrim held up her ear of corn. The audience cheered. The ear of corn gazed out at everyone, clapping and cheering. Yes, thought the ear of corn. Today, a star was born. Fluffy's Great Escape. 
So it doesn't say chapter two, but I could say chapter two, Fluffy's Great Escape. Fluffy went home with Maxwell for Thanksgiving break. Maxwell showed Fluffy to his little sister, Violet. Oh, sweet little piggy, said Violet. Yuck, said Fluffy. Maxwell showed Fluffy to his dad. What do you call that thing? Asked his dad. Guinea pig, thought Fluffy. But you can call me Sir. On Thanksgiving morning, Maxwell helped his mom wash the celery. Fluffy nibbled the celery leaves. The doorbell rang. It's Grammy, said Maxwell's mom. Maxwell, quick, put the guinea pig back in his cage. Ooh, do you remember the title of the chapter? Fluffy's Great Escape. I suspect I know what will happen. Maxwell's mom and dad ran to the door to greet Grammy. Maxwell hurried Fluffy back to his cage in the den. Then he went to meet Grammy too. But the gate of Fluffy's cage was not closed all the way. Fluffy pushed it with his nose until the opening was as wide as he was. Then he jumped out of the cage. Celery leaves, thought Fluffy. Here I come. Let me take your suitcase to the guest room, Grammy, said Maxwell's dad. I can carry it, said Grammy. Let me help you, said Maxwell's mom. I can do it, said Grammy. I'm not that old. On that one page, there was three times it said, Grammy. Another one, Grammy walked down the hall to the guest room. Fluffy walked up the hall to the kitchen. He was sniffing the air when he heard a scream. Oh, someone cried, a rat. A rat, thought Fluffy, how awful. Fluffy turned around and ran the other way. What was Grammy really? Grammy hurried to the bathroom and shut the door. Maxwell's mom ran down the hall. Where are you, Grammy, she called. Fluffy ran into the guest room and hid behind a wastebasket. If there's one thing I don't like, he thought, it's a rat. Maxwell's dad knocked on the bathroom door. You all right, Grammy, he called. I saw a rat, Grammy called back. A rat, cried Maxwell's dad. How awful. Grammy opened the door a crack. If there's one thing I don't like, she said, it's a rat. Maxwell and his mom and dad walked Grammy to the guest room. Don't worry, Grammy, said Maxwell's mom. There are no rats in this house. Yes, there are, Grammy cried. I see one now. Who does she really see, though? Fluffy. That's not a rat, Grammy, said Maxwell. That's a guinea pig. A guinea pig, said Grammy. Why, I love guinea pigs. Maxwell showed Fluffy to Grammy. My, said Grammy, what a fine, big, handsome fellow you are. Grammy, thought Fluffy, you are a smart woman. Chapter three, Fluffy's horrible monster. No, Maxwell, said his mom, the guinea pig cannot sleep in your room. Please, said Maxwell, it's Fluffy's last night here. His mom shook her head. May I say good night to Fluffy, please? All right, said his mom. Maxwell picked up Teddy and ran to the den. Good night, Fluffy, said Maxwell. Fluffy was already asleep. I'm sorry that you can't sleep with me, said Maxwell. But Teddy can sleep with you so you won't be scared. Sweet dreams. Maxwell put the bear in Fluffy's cage and Fluffy did not wake up. He was dreaming that he was chasing a guinea pig named Duke. In the middle of the night, Fluffy woke up feeling hungry. His black eyes searched his cage, and there in the moonlight he saw it over by his food bowl, a horrible monster. It was giant. It had a long snout and small beady eyes, and it looked mean, very, very mean. Get out of my cage, Fluffy growled, and I mean now. Fluffy thought he saw the monster show his fangs. I'm not kidding, Fluffy growled. Fluffy thought he heard the monster growl back. Can you think of words that we said a whole lot as we read this I Can Read book? I want you out by the time I count to three, said Fluffy. One, two, three. The monster didn't move. Maybe the monster doesn't go to school, Fluffy thought. Maybe the monster doesn't know about counting. Okay, you asked for it, monster, thought Fluffy. Here I come, fully charged. The two rolled around the cage. Fluffy growled and hissed. He bit and kicked. He clawed and scratched. It was a terrible battle. 
When it was over, Fluffy, Fluffy's left ear flopped over, his right eye was half closed, and his fur was a mess. That might be my favorite illustration of the book. But the monster lay face down on the floor of Fluffy's cage. You should have run when you had the chance, said Fluffy. On Monday, Maxwell took Fluffy back to school. He made a report to the class. It was fun to have Fluffy stay at my house, Maxwell said. When he goes to your house, remember, Fluffy likes to sleep with a teddy bear. True or false? I don't think so. Can you think of words that this book used over and over that the next time you might be able to see? I can think of at least three, but Fluffy, Maxwell, Grammy, oh goodness. And I think the word said I would know again. So, do you know now why I chose those words for this week's treasure chest? Yes. They're words that kept repeating in this book. They weren't rhyming. There really wasn't a pattern like the books we read before, but they say them over and over, and as you become better readers, that's a good thing. All right, first grade friends, Bye for now. Have a super awesome, fantastic day.